But first, this is a devlog, so we gotta go back to Steam VR for a second. So, because I was struggling with the town, I decided to get into modeling. I made these mining rocks because there's going to be mining in my game and that led to this whole area being created. I actually did a video on how I made these three rocks so if you want to do these yourself you can just check that out. And whilst I was making the mine I discovered that these grid lines are just a reference and you can actually build under them and you can move it. So I thought great now I can make a real mine. I remember the tip about going from narrow areas to big areas it has a cool effect. And I used reference photos to make this mine. It still has a lot of work, but it was doing pretty well. The town started bothering me so much that I couldn't work on anything else, knowing that this was just a problem waiting to be solved. So I started experimenting again, just trying anything. Big buildings, small buildings. I messed with the textures. I tried to pretend I was in the map as the camera and really feel the street. But it, it would be handy if I could have just played, but I didn't have the Steam VR set up. But we pushed through, and as we pushed through, we started to see some building clashes. The area was inconsistent. I was so frustrated that I created this dummy in hopes that I could punch it one day. It was around this time that I did make the city wall. I was thinking, how could I have a temple and not a city wall? It was open, and now there is a city wall. I actually liked it when it was open. But you know, everything's up for change every now and then. Sometimes you should just start from scratch, but at a different angle. So I tried working on this upper area of the town and it was pretty horrible at the time. And after a while and some study of ancient civilizations and their building architecture, I came up with this, which I really like. I like this design for our village. And I don't know how I went from making six perfect houses to this hideous barn. So instead of deleting it, I thought that's exactly what I do. I'll use it as a barn. And this is now the barn. Welcome barn to the sandbox world. So that was as far as we got. And then finally, Whoa, out of nowhere, jeez. I love things like this on the main menu, how it's totally animated. And when you go to exit, ready? Oh, all right. Now, instead of messing around, let's play Sandbox. A slightly better Sandbox. Uh, sandbox Plus Edition? Uh, sandbox. How? Uh, classic Sandbox, shitty sa Handbox? Ah, Sandbox, no sand, of course. but it was finally time to see my own game. I knew something like this would happen. A stressful sight when I first logged in. Was I about to lose hundreds of hours of progress because of compatibility issues? I kept investigating and it turns out that Steam VR uses different shaders to sandbox. Whilst the wireframe was there, which is important, that's the data of the mesh, all I had to do was open my material VMAT files and then save them with a sandbox shader and recompile it and it was all good. But unfortunately, blend shaders did not hold the data. So that meant I had to re-blend everything. Like I had to go around and reshade the map. And I guess this is why some people say it's better just starting from scratch. But honestly, like having the mesh and the wireframe down and only having this material issue, that's not a big deal to me. Like, yeah, it took me a couple hours and I had to just reload all the materials and all the models. But once you do it, like your progress is there. I had some weird issues where some of the models did work, but then some didn't. Like the Sapphire one clearly just didn't work and I have no idea why. But again, just opening that in model doc and then saving and recompiling. 
There was some assets that I had to straight up replace or just delete because they were from the Steam VR home and not from the sandbox space. But in terms of transferability from Dota engine or Steam VR engine into the sandbox, you can do a lot of development if you can sacrifice the blending aspect. Okay, a little confusing. This is not my game. This is sandbox in my map. I want my game in my map because there's not going to be pistols and stuff. So this is my game. Now, the water does work, but as you'll see later in the video that currently I can only get black moving water, so instead I opted for just blue still water. Still functional. So, I've made a lot of progress on the temple, but I don't think I've shown much of it on screen. It's still empty and spacious, but we have finished the interior kind of layout. Like, it's three stories and a basement, and you can actually move around in it. The view is quite nice, which I really wanted to capture, but there's still a lot of chunky work to do. I'm gonna have something happen up here, but right now it's still all early in development. But for now, the view of the city, you can kind of see what I'm going for. I'm going to be spending a lot of time working on the actual game mechanics, so I don't know when the last time I'll work on this temple will be. I really hope by next devlog I can attack these things. I think it'd be really fun. Now this area, I'm not going to lie, I used to hate it. I thought this was going to be a really dead spot on the map. But after adding these really nice asset of trees that I think come from rust, I hope that we can use them. I hope Face Punch lets us use them because they're really nice just makes the area look so much better especially in the sandbox engine uh, i do have to learn how to make trees of this quality still but you know as for now this is how it looks if you keep going you get this jungle area so i'm planning on having that plane develop into a jungle but not much has been done right now so far we have a basic ui as you can see the health bar with the effects and the critical health effects it's pretty good for right now but there's still a lot of areas that we need to work on, especially with lighting and entities and all kinds of things that we can now delve into now that we actually have sandbox. There's a lot of areas I haven't showed in this devlog that I kind of leave out because if you ever play this game one day, I hope that I'm not spoiling anything for you. And there's a lot of discovery that people enjoy when they play a game and I want to leave that alive.
So there might be some areas that you may never see in these dev blocks, which, you know, I think is cool. But there's something that I really want to implement in my game, and that's if you've ever seen or played Final Fantasy XIV, their jumping mechanics and their take on parkour puzzles, there's never been more fun I've had than parkour or jumping around in a map on Gmod. And I just think that aspect needs to be in my game because it makes it really fun. And it's going to be challenging. And if there is a situation where people just can't do something, I will offer an alternative for the people that suck. But, you know, it's something I really can't wait to implement. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's so much we can do now that I can actually play the game. There's still so many issues that I'm personally having. Like when I compile my map, I'll no clip at certain heights. It's kind of random and I'm still going over the architecture and deleting and remaking things and nothing set in stone. Scaling seems to be an issue, but now that I can play the map, surely this won't be an issue anymore. These doors are clearly too big. I'm sure now that I can walk around the town, I can actually defeat this architectural clash issue that I'm having. It's such a big bonus being able to exist in the world. I mean, look where we came from. I was looking at camera angles like this, and now we're doing something like this. My water is still black and I don't know why. Underwater works with a fake material that kind of imitates underwater instead of a HUD. We have floating objects so that we can use for our parkour mechanic that I talked about. But there was something that I was really trying to fix. I thought my map would be better rendered or better handled if everything was separated into sections instead of one giant mesh. So I started highlighting the map and unfortunately using the lasso tool is not the best tool so don't do that. I should have done this in a 2D view. But anyway, I started cutting out sections of the map so that each thing I in theory would just load better instead of having one giant mesh. That was the idea. But when I did that, I started getting these seam lines and it started breaking apart the map as you can see here. And I think it's contributing to this triangles issue because when I merge them, it just turns back into one big mesh. And currently I have it separated and it's not working. So maybe I should join it back together. But currently I've been looking at the construct map and this is a really good project to learn from. As soon as you get sandbox, I recommend just jumping in here and seeing how everything works. I know it's taught me a lot and I'd be pretty lost without it since the wiki isn't up to date. But we're in that stage where, you know, your game mode could be working today and then tomorrow there's a small update and you'll have to dig around, spend a couple hours trying to fix it, which is expected in a beta. But for now, I have been trying to do my best in learning how mapping works and how everything works, but it's gonna take a long, long time before I have the hang of everything, which was expected. 